And we're here with Jan Veronik with Greenpeace International, a group which is active here in Japan, especially in measuring radiation levels in Fukushima and the disaster zone after the earthquake and tsunami and uh, subsequent nuclear disaster. And so thank you very much for taking a moment to join us today. My first question to you is if you could tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing here and why is it important for Greenpeace to be here to get this message out? Yes. Well, Greenpeace is organizing a team of specialists, uh, which arrived actually already one week after the nuclear accident started to unfold. And we see our role primarily at the moment to take independent investigation and actually make the measurements of the levels of contamination, of uh, the background, of the food people eat. And we also sent uh, our flagship Rainbow Warrior to the sea to actually con measure the contamination of the ocean and the marine life, which is important part of the diet of the Japanese population. And uh, as we were talking earlier, you were saying that it is very interesting to see the city has sort of a, a, a parallel life, if you will, uh, the disaster in one hand and, and, and people going about their daily business on the other hand. Talk to me a little bit about that. I actually find it uh, personally very disturbing because uh, on one hand you see the Japanese authorities uh, forcing people and the society to be back to normal, kind of, so that people go to the work again, kids go to the schools, farmers start to actually plant uh, their fields because it's a growing season. And yet at the same time uh, there are still extremely high levels of radiation and the contamination of both in the soil but also potentially in the food. So uh, for me it was uh, really like visiting another universe in a way that on one layer you see the normal life of a normal city. We were in the center of Fukushima town, so it was pretty civilized, everything going as normal. And then you go with the radiation equipment and you can actually see that all over the spot there is like 30 to 50 times increased level levels of radiation. And then at public places like the playgrounds, the schoolyards, along the streets where, people, where kids go to the school, there are hotspots that go even up to 500, 700 times above what is normal. And this is just unbelievable because uh, at those levels of exposure, uh, this is certainly risking the health and lives of people. And uh, if you draw the parallel to the Chernobyl disaster, then actually Soviets decided to evacuate everyone. Uh, that was living at the place where the radiation was even three or four times lower than what we can see in Fukushima city today. This is three months after the accident started, but the Japanese, Japanese authorities actually, they withhold information, they don't tell people the truth, and they don't provide them with any kind of support that the people would deserve. How exactly is Greenpeace uh, getting involved right now? What activities are you doing and what are you encouraging? As I have said, Greenpeace is now focusing on uh, verification and measurements that are taken independently of the government. And uh, in that sense, we've actually managed to force the government to, for example, extend the, con the monitoring of the sea. And we also hear that the government is now revising at least some of the protective measures for children, which is definitely good to see. But yet the government is too slow and doing too little, actually, than uh, the situation would deserve. For the long term, uh, we see our role that uh, we would like to be on standby or be at disposal for the communities that are impacted. And we want to keep the specialists and the equipment here during the course of the year, perhaps until next year as well. Because especially when the harvest key season comes, then we can expect another risks that actually the food will enter the markets and then people get, uh, can get internal contamination which from the health perspective is much more serious than uh, just being irradiated from outside, from the street, from the ground. And in terms of a long-term uh, solution, what do you see for the future of Japan as this crisis plays out? Because this isn't something that is going to wrap up very easily. You can say from the levels of contamination and the contaminants which are basically at the moment uh, based on the cesium or cobalt isotopes that have uh, pretty long half-lives, that uh, the contamination will be around for many years, perhaps even decades. And therefore, we are really coping with long-term serious implications and impacts of the accident. In that sense, uh, what is crucial is one thing, the government really takes the science first and puts the interest of public health protection at the first place and doesn't play the politics as uh, they have been doing so far. And second thing is that 
even for long term, I think it's important for Japan to learn the lessons in the sense that uh, nuclear power, as we have seen, is inherently unsafe. There is always unpredictable combination of the natural catastrophe, the technological failure, human error that can result in the situation when the reactor gets out of control very fast. It was a question of few hours when the full meltdown happened. And uh, in that sense, uh, it's really unsafe to take the bets and uh, continue with nuclear power. We believe that the Japanese uh, government and the decision makers will change the course of the country. And we are pretty convinced that it's feasible for Japan to phase out nuclear power in the next decade by 2020. Uh, because there is a pretty big potential of renewable energies and efficiency that uh, Japan can tap into. And moving past Japan into the, the, the rest of the world, what do you think uh, the rest of the world can learn from this? There are definitely not only lessons for Japan itself, but uh, it applies to other countries. We have seen a major shift already in uh, a number of big economies, for example in Germany, where definitely as a result of the Fukushima disaster, the government actually took big U-turn in the policy and uh, although initially they advocated extension of the lifetime of the current fleet of reactors, now they ordered that half of them is shut down immediately and the rest will be phased out in an increased uh, way, increased speed uh, by the end of the decade as well. Uh, we have seen the referendum in Italy uh, taking place this weekend where actually 95% of population voted no, so there is no nuclear power in the future of the country. Switzerland. Uh, speeded up as well the phase out and basically abandoned the plans to build new reactors. And even in France, which is one of the strongholds of nuclear industry, the recent opinion poll shows that 77% of population actually wants to have a phase out uh, from nuclear power in the country. So we can see a major shift and we just believe uh, that uh, decision makers will not fall to the trap of the industry and its lobby again and they will really follow the, the interests of public and the future generations in that sense that uh, there will be no new construction of new reactors, the current fleet will be gradually phased out and that uh, by 2050 the world can actually achieve uh, fully renewable energy supply globally. And shifting more to a personal level, if you don't mind, um, you have been to Fukushima, you have seen uh, this evidence of radiation. Uh, what does it mean for you to be there and to witness uh, this tragedy firsthand? For me, it was a very strong personal experience. I've been to Chernobyl before, and this was the second time I was really exposed to the true face of the disaster. When, uh, on one hand, you actually understand the numbers and you know what that means for the impact on health and impact on environment. And you also see the situations like, for example, when uh, one mother was crying to us because she was desperate, she wanted to protect the children, but she didn't know what to do, she had no information. And those things are really moving me very much and that uh, just motivates me actually to do the work that I'm doing because uh, I believe that we must make sure that things like this don't happen anymore, anywhere again.